What's up my friends, welcome back! So today we have another review of a 3D printer, and this is the new model from Anycubic, the Mega X, and this is quite huge. A few years ago I've made another review of the Anycubic i3 Mega, and this is kind of the same but a little bit bigger. So as always I'll make an unbox, then we assemble the printer which is quite fast with this printer, we'll make some tests for PTG, for PLA, ABS, nylon and flexible, and then I'll tell you the main specifications of this printer, and give you my own opinion. So guys, I hope that this video will give you the general idea about this printer, and if you like to buy it, you will find links below. So guys, let's get started! What's up my friends, welcome back! As always, we start with a quick unbox and see what we get with this kit. Then we assemble the printer and start it for the first time, and then I will tell you the main specifications, we make a few tests with different materials such as ABS, PLA, PTG, flexible and nylon, and finally I will tell you the good points of this 3D printer and the parts that I don't like. So let's make the unbox. Inside of the cardboard box, we first have the entire metal base of the printer with a heated bed, electronics and everything. This part is very big but also very compact and from the look of it, it will be very easy to assemble since everything is already mounted. Then we have the entire upper part of the printer, which is also made out of metal. Just join these two parts together and the printer will be ready. Finally, we have a power cable, the print removal tool, 1kg of white PLA material and a plastic bag of stuff. So now let's see what we have in this plastic bag. Ok, so first we have a small user manual for this printer. Then we have the metal spool holder that we will have to screw in place later. We have a USB cable, an SD card and a card reader for the PC. We have a spare part for the extruder together with some teflon tube and the small bags of screws. Next we have the filament detector and the belt tensioner. Finally we have some tools and some blue gloves. So that's it for the unbox. This is all that you receive with this kit since pretty much the entire printer is 99% already assembled. But anyway, let's mount it. Just lift the bottom case a little bit and slide the top part under it like this. Then on each side, you have to tighten 4 screws. So do that on each side and the body of the printer is ready, just like that. Finally, you have to plug the connectors on the side, so now power is connected to the upper part as well. Then add the connectors for the filament detector. After that add the metal spool holder on the side of the printer and after that screw in place the filament sensor. So that's it, just plug the power cable and turn the printer on, and the assembly process is ready. On the touch screen hit the home button and all the axes will home, and you could now level the bed. Place the PLA filament, pass it through the sensor and feed it into the extruder. Now insert the SD card and let's see if it has an example on it. Go in the menu to print and select the example file and start the first print test. I have to say that the example print was not that good there was too much loose filament, so for sure we have to increase retraction a lot. The overall quality looks promising, but because of the loose filament strings, we can't really tell the quality. I mean we have some decent details, but we need to make more tests with my own settings for speed, retractions, temperature and so on. As usual, I'll make some PLA prints till we get the correct settings, and then we'll make some tests for ABS, PETG as well and nylon. And finally, at low speeds, we will also test flexible as well, so let's start. I increased retraction a little bit and sliced a different object. With the same PLA material that came with the printer, I've now printed this fox. I have to say, the only error I can see is below the nose, but this is something normal because I haven't used support material. The rest of the layers are ok, I can see no ghosting effect and the overall quality is fine. But of course this print has no stringing areas, so next I've made another print with my own material. I've made a print for a benchy file with red PLA filament. Now this time we can see some errors. The first layers are ok, but then on the middle part we can start seeing some stringing once again between the window of the boat. Not just that, but it looks like the printer was feeding too little filament, so we have some sort of holes and ugly printing. So to reduce this stringing I've increased even more the retraction, but now I've also increased the feed a little bit, so it will push more filament out, filling those gaps. I've printed the same benchy file a second time. Now we can definitely see some improvements. Now the stringing is very low. 
and the layers are getting better. Better but not perfect. We can still see some holes in the layers, so we have to increase the feed even more. I mean the bottom layers of the boat are ok, but then in the upper part once again, it looks like there is not enough filament flow. So I've printed the Benchy file again and increased the flow even more. The third time is the winner. So finally stringing is equal to 0. Then the layers are very good. We have no more feed errors. But we do have some sort of tiny errors in the bow door, but the overall quality is great. So that was PLA and now we have some decent settings. We've seen the two owls which I could say it was a good print but with stringing errors. Then we have seen the fox which turned out great and finally we had 3 benchy files, getting better and better. Now let's pass to ABS. For now I only have this white bone color filament. I've tried the first print directly on the heated bed. I've increased the temperature to 240 degrees for the nozzle and 90 degrees for the bed. But even so, as expected, the print didn't stick well to the bed. Right now I don't have any printing glue or hair glass to use, so for the next print I've placed some painter's tape on the bed. The print started ok, but after a while the bottom layers were so wrapped up, so the print started to move around, and I've got this. So for the next ABS test, on the top of the painter's tape, I've also placed some glue, so the print won't move anymore, and I was finally able to finish the ABS print. As always we get some wrapped layers on the bottom. But I have to say that the rest of the print looks very nice. You must have in mind that ABS is a bit more tricky to print, but the printer was able to reach high temperatures and give me a decent ABS print, with good layers. Ok so the next print was using PETG material. Once again I had very good results, just as in case of the PLA. I've printed this baby Groot file and we still have some loose filaments below the chin, but that's normal, I had no support material. The rest of the print looks very good and feels pretty strong, so PETG is fine with this printer as well. Ok so the next print was using nylon. I've printed this chest piece with no problems. Actually I never had problems with nylon. The print looks ok, we had some very good layers and I can see no errors, so nylon is also good with this printer. Finally I lower the speed a lot and I print with flexible material. I only have this white flexible from eBay without a brand. But anyway at very low speeds, around 20%, the printer was able to do the job. I first tried at 30% speed, but in that case, the filament sometimes got stuck into the extruder, so I've lowered the speed even more. The print turned out quite good, so if you have patience, you could also print flexible with this printer. So after all the tests, I finally printed a vase in spiral mode with PLA material. I also got this blue PLA from Anycubic to test it. The print turned out with the same quality as the PLA prints before. So these were all the prints tests that I've made with the Anycubic Mega X. Now let me tell you some more specs about it. What I like is that it has a step motor on each side of the Z axis. That will ensure that the level will be always the same. Also we have an end stop switch on each side and to show you the effect of that we do this. I lift up just one side of the Z axis. Then I hit the home button. And as you can see, since we have a detector on each side, it will automatically level the Z axis. The touchscreen is a bit more high quality, very easy to use and very responsive. The frame is like a tank. Everything is made out of metal and very strong. The bed won't vibrate or move around at all. And what I like most about the frame is that it is very compact. All cables are routed in such a way that we can see the wires, and everything is connected here on these connectors to the main electronics inside which we will see in a moment. The bed is 300 by 300 mm and it has both the glass surface or aluminum if you want. The glass surface has some sort of texture on it, but I prefer to use the painter's tape. This kind of texture is not sticky enough in some cases. Below you have some big plastic knobs to adjust the bed level, so leveling the bed is very fast and easy. The entire bed is sliding on this big metal rail and that makes it even more stable. And the same goes for the extruder. It moves on the X axis with 3 V rollers on the back. The nozzle is inside this case, 
and the wires from the thermistor, the fans and the heater are all joined together in this connector and then all the wires are going into the main electronics case below. This is a nice compact design. By default, the printer has a 0.4mm nozzle and on the extruder block we can see two fans. One for cooling the print and the other one for keeping cool the upper part of the extruder. This printer uses a Bowden extruder, which in my opinion has the Teflon tube a bit too long. For this distance I can definitely feel some resistance while moving the filament through the tube. That's why for the flexible filament we had to lower the speed that much. Bowden system is not that good with flexible, especially when the tube is this long. The printer doesn't have a power zoom option, or at least I didn't find it. I've turned off the printer during printing and I didn't have any option to resume the print when I've turned it back on. Usually nowadays printers will all have this option. Maybe I have to activate it or something like that. Anyway, to use this printer you have the SD card input or the USB connector to connect it to the PC, but I usually always use the SD card for my prints. Ok, so now let's open the case and see the electronics. Just take out a few screws and remove the metal case. So this is what we have inside. We start with the controller board. This one is called Trigorilla and is based as always on the Atmega 2560 microcontroller. The best thing yet is that it uses external stepper drivers. In this way I could add some trinamic drivers and have a smoother movement and less noise. This is a huge extra, the ability to change the stepper driver, I like that. Another good thing is the use of external MOSFETs for the heated bed. And not just that, but it looks like these are some big high power MOSFETs, so we'll have no problems of overheating or something like that. So having this component is a good safety feature. The wiring is so nicely done, everything is well organized and with proper connectors. But the power supply, hmm, as a surprise is of only 12 volts. It has good connectors with proper insulation. The supply also has a cooling fan, and we can see another fan just above the stepper drivers. We can see the touchscreen module and we even have a speaker on the side for sound notifications. Usually they use a buzzer, but now we have some more realistic sounds. We have the SD card reader on the side and the main input on the other. And this main input plug has an on and off switch and a built-in fuse for safety. So that's all we have inside, we can close back the case. Ok, so let's see more. The position of the spool holder is not the best, but it's better than having it on the top of the printer because when you have 1 kg of filament oscillating on the top of the printer that might affect the print results. Like this from the spool holder it passes directly to the sensor and then into the extruder. The extruder is not a titan one but it's close enough and it also has the big plastic gear. I really like the fact that they've placed a plastic tube just at the entrance of the extruder. I usually have problems with fitting the filament in. But with the help of this tiny tube the filament goes directly into the extruder and then into the teflon tube. So guys, I guess that I had the same good results as for the Anycubic i3 Mega that we have seen in the previous video, but in this case we have an even bigger printing area. So we have a very fast assembly ready to print in just a few minutes, 300 by 300 printing area, full metal frame, very compact and strong, responsive touchscreen control, a filament sensor, one stepper motor on each side, very nice prints, external stepper driver which is a very nice option to have, but the power supply is only 12 volts. There are not many parts that I don't like about this printer. Maybe the fact it is a bit too noisy and that the bottom tube is a bit too long. Using trinamic stepper drivers I can reduce the noise, but the cooling fans inside will still be the same. Anyway, I like pretty much all this printer can deliver for this price. You have links below if you want to give it a look. I hope that you now have a good idea about the Anycubic Mega X 3D printer. Thank you for all the support on my website, the YouTube channels and Patreon. If you like this video give it a like and remember to subscribe. So thanks again and see you later guys.